Okay, people, welcome back. Uh, time for another one of these. So last time we did uh, forces and moments on a sliding block. Let's do forces and moments on a pendulum. So <clears throat> here is our original problem. We've got some pin joint at the top. We've got uh, a rotating body here. Let's call this body A. We know that we need to put some uh, some frame on it. So here it is, X hat A, here's Y hat A, right? Okay, what else? Uh, we know that we need, uh, we need some non-moving point. We need some non-moving inertial frame. Okay, so I said that the goal here, what we wanna do right now is we want to, uh, <clears throat> we wanna come up with sum of forces on A and we want to come up with the sum of moments on A. <clears throat> now, uh, remember, anytime you go to do moments, right? Anytime you see this, you should always uh, you should always ask, what point are we taking the moments about? So, do we want to take the moments about point N? Do we want to take the moments about point A? For now, let's. Uh, <clears throat> Let's take the moments about <clears throat> point A, okay? So we're gonna do the sum of forces uh, on the whole thing, and then we're gonna do the sum of moments about A, and we are saying that A is the center of mass, right? Okay, so what's the, uh, what's the approach? What's uh, step one? Look at this thing, make sure you agree with what it's doing, how it's moving, what do we do next? Uh, we need to do a free body diagram. Now, is this a free body diagram? <clears throat> The answer is no. Right now, body A, we, we're showing it pinned, right? We're showing it pinned at point M. Free body diagram is everybody disconnected. It's the exploded view of the whole mechanism. So here's body A. So what's the, uh, <clears throat> what's the free body diagram of this? There you go, that's it. So uh, here's your free body diagram. We just need to put all the forces in the model, right? So. What are the forces <clears throat> acting on this body? Well, there is some gravitational force, right? Acting through the center of mass. We're gonna say that it acts in the, uh, the negative <clears throat> y hat n direction. Uh, and then there's also something going on here at the pin, right? This pin physically prevents the, uh, the motion of this pendulum, right? It allows the, the rotational motion, but it, it prevents this pin, uh, this pendulum from moving up, down, left, and right. So we've talked a lot about constraints, right? There is a constraint here at this pin joint. If the pin joint wasn't here, the, uh, the pendulum would be a six degrees of freedom body, right? It could, it could go anywhere it wants to, it could spin any way it wants to. Yeah, hey, hey little one. <clears throat> By putting this pin joint here, you're taking away degrees of freedom, right? Uh, you've taken away the pendulum's ability to come out of the board or to go up or to go left. You can't bend it this way and I can't spin it about its long axis, right? The only thing I can do now is the only thing I can do is I can spin. So what that means is when you take degrees of freedom out at, at joints like this, you have to have reactions that come along with it. There are reaction forces that enforce those constraints. So <clears throat> what are the constraints on this thing? Well, it can't arbitrarily go left and right. So that means there's a uh, reaction force here in the X. <clears throat> it cannot arbitrarily go up and down. So there's a reaction force here in the Y direction. Now, I'm not gonna draw all of these on the diagram, but this thing can also not come in and out of the board which means there's a reaction force here, right? Preventing it from moving in and out. Uh, there would also be a reaction moment about this axis, preventing you from bending it in and out of the board. There would be a reaction moment here on the spin, right? I can't spin this thing about its axis, which means there's a reaction moment there as well. The only motion this thing can do is it can, it can rotate here and the fact that it can rotate means that there is not a reaction force. There is no reaction uh, in the direction of motion. So the motion here is the rotation, so there is no, uh, there is no reaction moment at that pin joint. So 
Uh, this then is just the, uh, this is just it. So we could, we could do something else. We could add, let's see. Let's add something else. Let's add a, um, <clears throat> let's add an external force and let's apply it down here at the end. And let's, uh, how should we, how should we attach this? Let's attach it like that. So when I put it like that, uh, I'm defining it here. <clears throat> I'm defining it in the Y hat A direction. So as this thing spins, uh, the force spins with it. So uh, we've got these four forces. Let's, uh, let's come up with these claims right here, right? Let's do some of forces and let's do some of moments. I've gone ahead, cleaned this up. We're looking for the sum of forces on A. Uh, I left the free body diagram and I added to the free body diagram the A-frame. So this will help us when we go and we need to define some of these vectors. So for sum of forces though, sum of forces again, sum of forces is easy, we just list these things. So I'm gonna say uh, minus <clears throat> MAG in the Y head in direction. We have this F external and that is moving in the Y hat uh, moving. It's uh, being applied in the Y hat A direction. So we've got gravity pointing down. We've got uh, this external force in the Y hat A. <clears throat> Next, let's talk about these reaction forces right here. Uh, reaction forces, there, there is no uh, all the time, every time correct answer. It's not that uh, you want to do it in the end frame or you want to do it in the body frame, okay? Sometimes you'll want to do it in the end frame. Sometimes you want to do it in the body frame. For now, for this example, let's, um, let's say plus Rx in the X hat N and let's do Ry in the Y hat N, okay? So let's just find these in the, uh, in the end frames. Now, for the sum of forces expression, this is fine. We can mix in frame, we got, we got X in, Y in, Y in, Y A. This is perfectly fine, okay? When you're doing your homework, when you're doing exams, feel free to leave it like this. Next, <clears throat> sum of moments on A about A. <clears throat> okay, again, maybe, you, uh, maybe you're just really good at calculating moments and cross products. Feel free to skip some of these intermediate steps. Uh, let's take it slow. I've got four forces up here. I'm looking for the moments that these forces create about center of gravity. We could go through the formalism and, and write out position cross gravity. We know that gravity is not going to create any moment though, right? It acts through the center of gravity. So there is no, there is no arm. There is no moment arm from where this force is applied to where we're taking it about. So no moment created by gravity. <clears throat> let's do uh, let's do this one, and then uh, we'll do these. So we need some points on here. So here is point A. Let's call this one down here. Here's point B, and we'll call this one uh, point C. <clears throat> I know that it was point N uh, on the other one. We'll just leave it as C. That's fine. So what have we got? We've got the position vector from A to B, remember it's, it's the vector from where are you taking the moments about? We're taking the moments about point A. So we're going from point A uh, to point B to where the, the force is applied. So it's PAB cross, and I'm just gonna write in F external. This is in the Y hat A. And then plus, uh, these both, both of these forces right here, these, these reactions, they both act at point C. So we can do it all at once. We can say PAC cross, and I'm gonna put them both in here. So Rx, uh, Xn, plus Ry, Yn. <clears throat> this is a good place to start whenever you're doing your moments. Write out some kind of um, like theoretical uh, expression, right? Write out some kind of theoretical thing, uh, and then go through and put in the details for, for the problem. So. In this particular problem now, what are these position vectors? Well, uh, let's say, let's pretend that uh, A is halfway, right? We could, we could 
redraw this diagram here to put, uh, if you wanted, you could make point C be perfectly at the end. It doesn't matter. Um, let's, uh, let's do a general and let's say PAB is uh, one length in the X hat A, right? We're going from A to B. It's in the positive X hat A direction, L1. And let's say the other one, we got to go from uh, A to C. This could be a different distance, right? We could, we could pretend that this is perfectly in the middle. We could generalize it so it isn't. Um, either way is okay. So L2, and we're going in the negative, right? It's negative, we're going against it. Negative X hat A direction. So I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna take these two position vectors, I'm gonna put them in here, and we're gonna resolve the cross products. You can see what I've done. I've taken the position vectors and I've just put the position vectors here into the cross products. So let's, let's take these and let's resolve them. Um, here was that first position vector, L1 and X at A, right? We're just going from A to B, it's in the, it's in the A frame. Uh, the external force, we've defined also in A frame so we can perform that cross product. So when you do that, uh, we're looking at the scalars, L1, F external, and then X cross Y is positive Z, right? That's positive Z, okay. So plus. I want to do this cross product. Uh, notice we have a little bit of a problem. We have position vector in A frame. We have uh, forces in the N frame. Now, remember, we, we said just a minute ago, when you, when you go to do these reaction forces, you have to figure out what frame you want to define them in, right? In this problem, I said, let's just use the N frame because it's kind of intuitive and it's easy you immediately run into problems doing your moments because your position vectors are probably here in body frame. So we could go and we could swap these into the A frame. Uh, I'm gonna say for right now for this problem, let's just leave it like this, okay? This isn't wrong, it's just the forces are in a different frame. So if we want to do this cross product, either this needs to go into the N frame or these need to go into the A frame. We've done these rotations so many times, we know what this is, x hat a equals cosine theta, blah, 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 right? You can just take that, you can put it in here. So let's say, uh, let's do it in green, uh, minus L2, and then let's put braces on this one. What is x hat a? Well, it's cosine theta 1 x hat n plus sine theta 1 y hat n right? This is this. It's just now in the in frame. So it would be all of this cross, what? It's still uh, our x, x n, and then r y, y n. So this is that, uh, this intermediate step right here. So <clears throat> what is all of this going to equal? I'm just going to bring this first part down, L1, f external, z hat a, plus and then what, what is going to happen down here? Well, this is like, um, this is a, a big distribution. This is like uh, if you had x uh, plus y, and then you multiply by v plus w, something like this. We know that you would, um, you would foil this, right? Go back to, uh, what was it, like, like sixth grade, whatever it was, right? We know how to expand this. If you do that on this, what ends up happening? We have, uh, we have an x hat n term that you would cross with x hat n. So x hat n cross x hat n is zero. We have a y hat n and a y hat n. When you cross those, you get zero. So the only thing that's going to be left is this x cross this y, and then this y cross this x. Okay, so let's do um, x cross y is going to be positive z. So we're looking at uh, negative L2 <coughs> cosine theta 1 r y z a. Th that's this first term right here cross the last term here. Minus L2 cosine theta 1 and then r sub y, there's your scalars. 
and then we did x cross y, which makes it z. It was negative because there's a negative here. Okay, what's the next piece? Next piece is going to be this one cross this one, the, the second term here and the first term here. This one's going to be y cross x, which is negative z. There's a negative here in front, so the negatives will cancel. So we're looking at plus, what have we got? L2 sine theta 2 multiplied by Rx, and that is in the z hat a. So this, down here in black, This is the moment on body A taken about point A. Notice they're all about Z. I've got them written at Z hat A here. We know that Z hat A is the same thing as Z hat N. Uh, let's see if this, if this expression makes any kind of sense to us. Uh, this first one right here, L1 times F external Z hat A. These, uh, L1 is constant, and then the F external is some specified amount. Here it is, and we can see that since we defined x hat, uh, or sorry, f external in y hat a, here you are, if x, f external is acting in y hat a, then it doesn't matter how this thing rotates, right? This f external is always going to create a positive moment, right? If we assume the, the numerical value is positive, then it's, it's gonna be a positive moment. Uh, look at what's happening down here with these. So these terms, we've got our x, and it's a, a function of the angle. Sorry, I wrote theta two there. That should be, yeah, theta one. <clears throat> okay. So R X is a function of the angle. R Y is a function of the angle. Uh, and why is that? We defined these in the N frame, right? So imagine that um, at a certain moment in time, At a certain moment in time, the pendulum happens to look like this. And it is perfectly horizontal. Okay, we, can, we know that as this thing goes round and round, it is sometimes going to occupy this position. Our x is acting right here, our x. Now, is the value of our x zero? Probably not. Maybe this is a part of some other mechanism and this thing's being pulled on, right? There could be reaction forces here. Down here at the bottom, we're concerned about the moment, right? We're concerned about the moment that this thing creates. Look at this last term down here. <clears throat> it's L2, and L2 is again just, uh, L2 is just this length right here, whatever this length is. It's L2 multiplied by sine of theta one. Well, in this diagram right here, what's the, what's the numerical value of theta one? Well, here's x in, right? And right now, there's x a. So in this drawing, theta one is equal to zero, right? And if we take the zero and put it in right here, sine of zero, this is zero. So in this orientation, our x, it creates no moment. The second term, uh, L2 cosine theta 1 Ry, in the same orientation, again, theta 1 is 0. If you take theta 1 and you put it into cosine, cosine of 0 is 1, right? Uh, L2 is, again, just a number, and this thing is negative. So we're saying, uh, here's R sub y. If R sub y is positive, here's R sub y, right? And I can draw it over here as well. R sub y is like that. So if we assume Ry is positive, and we assume theta equals zero, then this is negative L2 Ry. So it's creating a negative moment about point A. And there it is, right? There's Ry. If you can imagine this body, right? Here's a, here's a body, and if I push up on it, right, from over here, it makes it wanna go through a negative rotation, right? This is a negative moment. So. Uh, here is going to be your sum of moment equations for something just like uh, something simple like this pendulum. Again, remember that gravity does not create a moment. It acts at the center of mass, so it can't have a moment about center of mass. And that's why we have this. So um, I'll leave you with this. Uh, the problems are going to get more complicated. We're going to start chaining multiple bodies together, right? We know there's mechanisms, uh, crank sliders, four bar linkages, etc. Another thing that we're going to do also is we're going to change this part right here up. Instead of taking moments about center of mass, 
What if we took moments about another point? What if we took moments about point C, for example? If you take the moments on body A about point C, you could do this as practice. We're going to do it in future videos, but just consider uh, which forces create moments and which ones disappear. There are advantages to being able to do this. Uh, final comment, and I'll, I'll leave you with this before you take off. <clears throat> I do just want to raise the question, what do you do if you take the moments about another point? What is this equal to? We know that we can write an expression for the moments, but remember that the sum of moments <clears throat> is DDT of angular momentum, right? And if you do the moments on body A about point C, then you're looking at the change in angular momentum of body A about point C. And we've done this before, right? We talked about finding uh, momentums about arbitrary points. You have to do parallel axis theorem and you have to modify this output just a little bit, right? There are advantages to doing this and we will see some examples in the future. So for now, for today, uh, just go back and practice this. <clears throat> There will be uh, there will be some more complicated worked examples coming up in future videos, uh, and I'm also going to blend in some worked examples of energy as well, springs, uh, gravity, kinetic energy. So for now, that's it. Have a good night. Stay safe.